Welcome to yet another episode of the Blue Table Talk Show, the migration program that helps Nigerians to make informed migration decisions. And today with me in the studio are two amazing gentlemen who are going to be doing justice to the topic of is the grass truly greener on the other side for irregular migrants and migration. I have with me Victor Lutenko of the IOM, who is the Senior Programs Coordinator and Head of IOM in Lagos. Thank you for coming on the program with us. Thank you for inviting me. And I also have with me as well, Stephen Kolade Adeniyi. Kolade Stephen Adeniyi, who is coach and behavioral expert 361 degrees. But before we go on and we dissect the topic today of is the grass greener on the other side for irregular migrants and migration, we shall be joining Miko Banti on the streets of Lagos as he asks Nigerians that question. What do they think? Is the grass truly greener on the other side for regular migrants? And my name is Emito Fedri Biro. What they are facing over there is not. Um... It's into right to my about. All right, we are Nigerians, first of all. It's our country. Well, if we all go, we will Nobody. stay and defend. We're supposed to be patriotic. We're supposed to stay in your country. Okay. If I have a very enabling environment where my business is thriving, of course, I wouldn't go anywhere. My job for life. <laughs> and to some, they may be like, try to, you know, the urge for better living conditions. So some, it could be uh, academic progress, you know, in a way of advancing the academic and all that. So to me, it's... Why is that to the individual? Yes. Okay, so we have seen Miko and we've heard the voices of Nigerians on the streets of Lagos and what their thoughts are about irregular migration and the grass being greener or not greener. And I'm going to ask Victor what his thoughts are on this very interesting question. The Nigerians often migrate irregularly with high expectations of getting a good job and living a more comfortable life abroad. They just feel that the streets are paved with gold, everything is green. But from your experience in the migration sector, is this always the reality if they eventually migrate? Well, if we want to generalize, and we have to generalize, uh, is the grass greener? Yes, it's greener. Okay. Um, because migrants are very conscientious and rational actors. These Overall, if you look at migrants, migrants will tend to be the best part of the society mm -hmm. because they are more active. They are taking the risk. They are the ones who, you know, in order to support their family or support themselves or to reach their aspirations, they are taking some actions that are, let's say, a little bit outside of the normal. Yes. So that's why you would see that migrants usually in the countries of destination, they are the ones who are succeeding the most. They are the ones who are always uh, finding work, who will be the ones that will lead a lot of uh, companies and, and right. businesses. So mm -hmm. migration, if you want, is a little bit of a self-selection of the best, right? Mm -hmm. So saying that these guys just don't know what they are doing is, is, is <laughs> leading us in the wrong direction. Very true. Uh, now, but so my, my, my answer to your question would be the grass is green. Uh, and probably greener, and probably even more greener than they think about. Mm -hmm. But th the problem is not about the grass. The problem is with the sand mm. in the desert mm. that a lot of these people are, are taking in order to to get to the to those um, you know uh, fields. And uh, is the 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 sand in the desert hot? I think that's the, the, the that's a good question to ask. Th that's it? the most mm -hmm. important question. And and my answer is it's hotter than you think. Uh, so a couple of days ago, a boat capsized on the way from Yemen to Djibouti. My colleagues working in Djibouti just informed about that. So more than 30 women, children, men uh, just drowned. Um, a little bit before that, so last two weeks, we had two boats capsized. These are the people who were on their way to Saudi Arabia to find you know, uh, a better life, jobs. Are there jobs in Saudi Arabia? There are jobs. So the problem is not about jobs there. The problem is, do we have good, safe, secure, open, 
regular pathways to get there, to get to right? Those places. So, and and what do we know about these pathways? Mm -hmm. How well have we considered the risks? I think that's the central question when we talk about the, the irregular migration. So, I think we have to give the appreciation to these people for their resilience, for them wanting to support their families mm. and, and to, to go there and, mm. and to do whatever it takes in order to support back their family. You know, yeah. Thank you, Victor. I like the fact that unusually you've been able to spotlight the, the resilience and the characteristics of irregular migrants. However, one of the questions that comes up every time, even in counseling with a lot of these people, is that if we migrate irregularly, can we get better job opportunities? Are these things available? You understand? So, you know, when you think about it, for irregular migrants, would you say that there are better job opportunities available for them abroad? Although the grass is greener, as you have rightly said, but as irregular migrants, considering their skills or their educational certificates, do, are they able to really get better job opportunities? Well, that's a little bit of a different question. So, or there are two questions here. Are there jobs available in the countries of destination? There are, and there will be more jobs available. Uh, migration is always going to where the vacancies are. Mm -hmm. It's not going to where the, the, the economy or the job market is saturated. True. Um, so th the same with the migrants. And, and th there is an, an entire volumes of scientific literature that will show very little to no effect over the job or access to the labor market of the locals. Mm. So migrants are not stealing jobs. Okay. They're focusing on the sectors in which there are jobs and there is a need in, in labor force. That's first. Secondly, one of the biggest issues that is affecting Nigeria, and it probably will continue to affect, is the so-called um, brain drain, right? So. Um, the, the, the immigration of those qualified, of those who studied here, of those who have different uh, type of skills. And I'm not talking just about doctors, right? Oh, yeah. So, or engineers, or, or those who are kind of very easy to understand what the brain drain is. I'm talking about nurses. I'm talking about people in technical um, uh, professions. Those who have maybe one, two very narrow skills, but which is highly appreciated uh, out there. Now, sure. now Brain drain is a problem, but there is a bigger problem than brain drain. What is Brain waste. Hmm. It's when you are a doctor here and you're going abroad and because nothing is available for you to work as a doctor because of your diploma or because you, you haven't been prepared or because some some other things and you have to be an Uber driver, that's wasting your brain. Which is even worse because that means, that means that your competence and your skill that you, you should nurture, you should grow, you should buffer, does not have the room to become better. And I and I think it's a great place to jump on because um, I like how you started. You captured it rather well, but it's also important also to buffer when you spoke about the grass truly being greener on the other side. I think the best thing that would capture it when we talk about people and behavior. Is to understand the concept that's been used in the past year that the world has become a global place which of course we know is a mix of the word global and local which means that everyone is a citizen of the world anybody that carries a passport that has the means can move from point a to point b and i felt to jump on what you said speaking about the concept of, of the of the brain waste because um i'm in a space that is um, learning, learning and development, uh, psychology, behavior. And I will tell you that um, in recent times, we've lost some of the people who are supposed to be like the tier one of the best in my industry because everybody believes that I need to go abroad to be better or to do what I do. And even though I'm not, I don't have a, I don't share the popular opinion, but this is where I differ from most of them. And one of the big questions I've asked over the years is this. If hypothetically the books you read, the certificate you picked up, were done by an American or done by someone in the UK, hypothetically, and then you pick up and say, oh no, I have the certification in Nigeria, I've practiced, I've made money, I've made a name. Also the next frontier for me is to go back to the UK and the US. Isn't that foolish? 
Well, you know, Kojie. Hold on, hold on. I'm, and, 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 and I would like for you to understand my perspective. And as much as I know you want a better life, I believe that every time as a professional, as a therapist, I pick up a material that is written and designed for an American, for British, for someone in Europe, for someone in the Middle East, there is an African content that you, we still need to distill it to so that it can be applicable. Are you dreaming of a brighter future? Are you planning to japa? We know the world is calling. We know you want to leave Nigeria at all costs. But before you go, have you heard of the Migrant Project? We provide free counseling services on the risks of irregular migration to help you understand the challenges of life in European countries if you plan to japa wrongly, either by road or sea. Guess what? We also provide support, referrals, and access to some local alternatives for jobs, skills training, and mental health support. Our counselors are here to empower you to have more agency in your migration decision making. Call these hotlines to speak with our counselors. This is a 100% free, individualized, and anonymous service. Edo State 0816 529 8860. Lagos State 0813 777 0863. 0814 783 5852. You can also follow us on Facebook at The Migrant Project and The Migrant Project Lagos. Choose the path of hope. Don't risk your life. Stay home and thrive. This message is brought to you by The Migrant Project Nigeria. Thank you, Kutu. I think what I want to say is people, when they're going abroad, they are bringing with them... Uh, I think a real luggage and an imaginary luggage, right? Mm. The real luggage is like the stuff um, that they are bringing. Good question. So what, what will first come to, to the mind of people is because they are poor. Mm. But poor people don't migrate. Very true. true. You need money. And even if you are going you know, barefoot through the desert, you need money. And you need significant money. And if you're going with regular mm. pathways, you need investments. You need to cover your first time of stay. You need to probably invest in your studies, in adjusting, in, in you know, preparing documents. You need a lot of resources. So Definitely. poor people don't migrate. Now, if you see that at a certain moment, Nigeria, or oh, there is a lot of discussion in Nigeria about migration, about JAPA, about what, what's first that comes into your mind? That we are in a crisis, right? Yes, true. That's mm -hmm. not what comes to my mind. Mm. To my mind comes, Nigeria is growing. Nigeria wow. is developing. Mm. Mm. As long as a country that is in, in the development phase is experiencing a growing migration, mm -hmm. that's a symptom of development, not a symptom of getting worse. Until a country gets to the upper middle level, mm. you will see migration going up because people migrate because of the aspirations, a function of their aspirations, mm -hmm. and a function of their capabilities. Mm -hmm. If they aspire to something more, and they, they have the capacities to get there, they will do that because they are rational human beings. Very interesting. Yeah. Now, what would you say to what Victor has just said now? And I want you to actually try, put, share your thoughts on the things that Victor has just said now. Oh no, he said a lot of very interesting things that I find very interesting. Um, the first, of, to jump off the last thing he said, is the concept of um, we we are more, which is one conversation we don't have as Nigerians, we are more a talent export nation mm. than most. And I'm speaking from the concept of somebody who works with um, management, has always been manage, in management consulting. And you look into, so, okay, I was with a company over the week, over the last week, and one of the core, because we're doing a strategy session for, for the new business year, was the fact that um, they admitted that there was a high attrition rate in the business and um, they were doing they had designed a plan for succession and, Such, uh, and no 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 it's it, they've come up with some strategy that okay. if the attrition happened people leave there is a succession plan that this so this person fills the gap so that the gap is not there mm -hmm. so i totally agree with you that we it's a problem consistently it is is not about the fact that we are lacking in people in capacity our major problem like you said is that people oftentimes even when they are here close their minds 
to the opportunities that exist here such that like you said when you have the opportunity that is here and you are able to own it strongly then you can leverage it to grow okay so coach k i like that you said that can you just tell me and tell all of us listening so for instance so i'm a young nigerian i'm just maybe 18 or i'm fresh out of university mm -hmm. and i thought to myself look you know what i want to be i want to get into the for a long time a lot of people do trainings coaching everything and i just want to be able to say okay you know how do i get into this space you know that so first i want to use because one of the things that we're saying is that careers career pathways are changing oh yeah they are so first how do i get into this space that you're in and secondly will this getting into this space you're in would it give me greener grass opportunities out of the country oh yes definitely um um recently i've had more parents who have been in my session say oh i like what you do okay. i have my daughter who's interested i have my son who's interested what can they do i said if they want to intern please let them come okay so internships are internship is the easiest way mm. that's number one and then it's not the internship in nigeria where you go to buy food <laughs> or we send you to buy rice okay no it's the internship where part of the daily strategy meetings that i have with the team you are involved okay. you we, we have an engagement with the clients want to do anything you openly sit down together and i throw questions and I, that's how I practice. Okay. And a few other persons I know in my space do the same thing. They give you opportunities to test yourself. Because it's one, it's because an 18 year old, I don't know how, how you're growing up was, but I know that between the ages of 11 and 15, I had, I had different career paths. 11, I wanted to become a policeman. 12, I wanted to become a lawyer. 13, I wanted, <laughs> I wanted to become all sorts of things. And even at 18, while I was going into university, I still wasn't sure where I wanted to do. So it's an, it's an age where you are oscillating between a choice you don't know exactly what, whether you want to be here or whether you want to be there but it's 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 uh, that's just how your mind processes but when you get into that space and you engage which is another thing i tell parents who have children university secondary school you now begin to ask fundamental questions either as a parent or either as a, either as somebody who's in charge of that word mm -hmm. to say oh so what is you begin to know whether the child really wants to learn when they do when they do you let them go and if they don't then you are kind enough to say okay no, i don't think this is your area of interest do you think we should try something else okay. for people in my space who want to learn when they come and they learn two things you can intern number two you can consistently read number three the youtube is the biggest unpaid university I like in the world that because for I data fantastic. i would like to come to victor now and ask you so because as we're coming to a very rapid end of such an interesting episode but time isn't really on our side as usual and we hope that we can have a part two of this because we're unpacking so many things. I would like to ask you, Victor, particularly for IOM, you know, or for generally for the migration space, actually. And then, I mean, what additional efforts do you think can be made to promote and increase access to safe and legal alternatives to regular migration of young Nigerians, as well as promote safe and legal options of migration? Because it's both sides now. Okay, let me maybe start from the fact that I think we should put the person at the center of the policies and okay. of the country. Beautiful. Mm. Because if you put the person at the center of the policies, then you'll discover that Nigeria changed a lot in the last 50 to 30 years. Mm. How big is Nigeria? How big? <laughs> oh, well, that's a good one. How big? How big is Nigeria? You will say about 1 million square kilometers, about 220,000 people, right? Like that traditionally. And I will tell you, no. Nigeria became a much, much more bigger country. And you know why? Why? Because I think Nigeria is where its citizens are. Hmm. And Nigeria is everywhere. True. Because hmm. Nigerians are everywhere. True. Nigerians are in does, every country in the world. Does the government have to take care of Nigerians even when they are at the end of the world? Yes. Hmm. And cater to their needs and work with them. If there is a Nigerian who went abroad, developed skills, did everything. What do I do as a government? Hmm. Do I ask him to come back home? No, not necessarily. <laughs> well, we've what, been what hearing I, that from our government, asking people to come back home. Yeah, what I think is the most important, for many Nigerians who are abroad, from abroad, they can do for the country much more than if they would return back. True, so I agree. We have to recognize individual pathways for every person. And if we design a policy, we have designed it with so many options. Ideally, as people there are, 
right? So we have to give the possibilities. And that's how we approach migration. If we, if we are led by this idea, this is how we have to approach migration. If there are people who have aspirations and capabilities here that they cannot develop now, let mm -hmm. them go. The best you can do, help them go. Help them do it safely, How? nicely. Okay. Negotiate regular, regular pathways with the countries. Mm. Support them in that country. Because the only thing that we can do is make sure that they start their job and they start restart their life there as soon as possible. Because if they restart it soon, if they restart it at a, at a level that is similar to what they have here, they will be able to grow more. They will be able to send back more money and they will stay in touch with you. And then you have much more chances for them to come back at a certain moment than if you just abandon them. Yeah. Right. So that's the first thing, which brings me to the idea that migration is a big, a very important life plan. It's a plan. You have to invest time. You have to invest plenty. You cannot trust, you know, just people just because they came up. You have to verify and double verify information. You have to have a plan B. You have to have a budget put aside. You have to have a plan for your family. It's an important. The more attention you pay to your plan, the more migration will pay back in terms of results for you, for the uh, country you are living, for the country you are going. For your dependents and even everyone, I agree. So if, if there is something that I would recommend or what we could do more yes. is to make sure that we invest more in telling people not to migrate or not to migrate. Mm -hmm. People, and Nigerians especially, are smart resilient, good enough to make the decision by themselves. We have to invest in their capacities to analyze this and to make this based on facts and information and not on feelings and emotions. Very true. Very, very true. I, I mean, very interesting. And I like the part, fact that you mentioned about planning and life planning, because that's one thing that I am so fastidious about. So let's say, Coach K, I mean, as you round off here, what is the one advice, especially going on life planning, that you give to our youths? that want to migrate for economic reasons by any means possible? By any, by any means possible, um, I would say it's it already is a limiting belief because when you say by any means possible, you are saying that this is how far I can go. But when you take off the limits, then there are a billion and one other options for you to take. And, it, it's, and then the options for migration, how to do it becomes larger, becomes bigger, becomes easier. Because because the opportunities that you would see mm. will be deeper. You, there will be a lot more than what you naturally think you would expect because you are saying, oh, it is a do or die affair. A do or die affair actually places a limit on you. Mm. So once you say, once you take away the do or die, and like, you, like Victor said, and you actually ask the big question, what are my options? Very true. Then the vista of opportunities now begin to open to you. I mean, today, today's, today's program has been, for me personally, quite mind-blowing because both gentlemen have taken angles and directions that are so unusual. And for anyone who is listening, you have listened and you heard it. Victor has said it. Coach K has said it. Planning. Open up your vista. Think of opportunities. The desperation to go out by any means possible limits you. We're resilient. We're weak rational we're analytical as nigerians and though the grass really is green on the other side but then there's good green grass here and many opportunities so finally victor as we know i would like you to tell us just very succinctly the challenges that your organization has faced in providing support to potential and return home training my name <laughs> 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 we, would do, we would do much more uh, with more money. And in Nigeria, Nigeria is huge. Yes. And we, we do a fantastic job going to one market and you know, organizing the peer-to-peer -peer event and, and convincing people and people are approaching us and, and the mothers are coming up like, my daughter, I was going to send her to buses leaving you know, next week, but now I understood it's too dangerous. I'm going to keep her analyzed more. So. I see it has impact, mm. but who's going to cover the other 10,000 market? That's true. So scaling up good ideas mm -hmm. is probably one of the biggest challenges that I see here mm -hmm. because we, we don't have a deficit in good ideas. There is no problem in good ideas. Secondly, the government, at least in my experience, is very supportive and also is understanding. 
And if I disagree with something and I, and I go there and I put the arguments on the table, we'll always find a compromise. There is no problem with that. The civil society, I think, is mature enough and, and has the capacity. When I approached the religious organization, I found a total understanding. I, I discovered that some of the people who are pastors now, they used to be migrants. <laughs> they, they, they don't just understand what I'm talking about. They've mm. been there. Been there. So what, what's one of the most important powers in terms of you know behavioral change in this country? But it's religion. It's religion, actually. And we, have, and, and we have to go there. Actually. And we have to go there. Religion. We have to be in prayer houses, in churches. My, if migration is so big, and if religion is so big... And to fuse them together. I agree. I agree. Thank you so in fact, much. in fact, in fact, there's a joke we make, uh, even in in, the, in my industry, that um, if you have to sell insurance to people in Nigeria, the biggest problem you have is Jesus and Mohammed, because they would rather pray to them than buy insurance of you. <laughs> Thank you so much, gentlemen. Truly, I mean, yes, we have had that that part where we understand the influence and the power of religion on Nigerians, and I, it's interesting yeah. that we're beginning to see how. That, that, you know, the thinking of how to, to merge everything. Thank you, gentlemen. It's been a pleasure having both of you, you on the Thank program you. today. You, and this is the Blue Table Talk Show, the one program that helps Nigerians make informed migration decisions. My name, once again, is Eni Tom. I'll tell you again. Thank you for watching the Blue Table Talk Show and make sure that you keep watching. Thank you. Show you the dream of a brighter future. I'll be with a plan to jump up. We not say the world they call you. We not say you won't leave Niger by all means. But before you go, say you don't hear of the migrant projects, we they give free counseling service so that you no go enter Wala if you want Jaka. And we go also help you understand of this small small Wala wait there for all these European countries. Whether you plan to Jaka by road or by sea, say you no know, say we they also provide support or we they refer people to get access to some local jobs, skill training and mental health support. Our counselors also did to help you know the things where you need to know before you leave this country. Make you call this hotline if you want to talk to any of our counselors. For Edo State, make you call 081-652-98862. And for Lagos State, make you call 081-3777-0863 or 081-478-35852. Make you know, say, you fit also follow us for Facebook at The Migrant Project or The Migrant Project Lagos. Make you choose the better part of Opo, no risk your life. Stay home to make camp. Now The Migrant Project Nigeria, now you bring on this message you.